Hi chums, right this is on to the, the, the almost the very last stage of the renovation. This is our bedroom and you can see how it works. It, it, that was the front room of the house there but because the bedrooms are so small it's just only like 12 feet or 13 feet from there to there. So you can't put in a king size bed and wardrobe because there's not enough space. So what we did was when we bought the property we got this side of the wall knocked down. This, this is a fireplace with these here. See wood, wood and then concrete. So this is, a, this is a fireplace. This is structural in the sense that it holds the roof up. So there's three fires back into this one part of the house, this one wall. So um, we got the wall knocked down and into this front room here. There's going to be lights going to take a set while to settle. So we're into the front room now. This is a very small room. It's only about 12 by 11, so it's not much room in it. It's not even, maybe, it's maybe 11 by 10. I can't remember, something small anyway, but it's ideal for getting dressed in. So then we decided I was going to build wardrobes and I thought if I build these myself it's going to cost a lot of money but I'm not going to get what I want because um, I couldn't get ones with these boxes in the top and stuff, you know. So what we did was we went to a bespoke, well a company that does bespoke wardrobes and got them to build these for us. Now, you know yourselves that when you're in a, a there's this, this wall here, right, there's the wall we took out there. And then obviously on the other side of this wall here, that's the fireplace over to about here. And there's a little gap behind that where the, the, the chimney juts out. So I'll show you what they did with that wee space behind the wardrobes. So I'm very pleased. These were, these were extremely expensive. That's, that's all I'll say about it. But now they're in. I can see it, there's no way I could have ever done a job like that. I always built my own wardrobes from the flat packs, like MFI and stuff. And those are perfectly, added, and Ikea, they're perfectly good if you put them together properly. Now, I knew it's going to be moving wardrobes about. There's, a, there's wardrobes, here, there's mirrors here as well. Look, there's my hand. There's mirrors here as well on these two doors. And I would have built the wardrobes very well and used, I've changed the fasteners over and made them much higher quality. Which meant that I could uh, disassemble the wardrobes and, what do you call it, uh, disassemble the wardrobes and rebuild them if I needed to, you know. So what we did was we got two like this. There's two wardrobes that are just basically straightforward double hangers. And then, see look at this, I like that look. Soft clothes. And then in here. We've each got a, a full rack of shelves down the side as well. And then over here in this one, we've got exactly the same thing. We've got the rack of shelves right down the side on that side. Um, these are about eight and a half feet tall. And then in here, we've got, we've got double hangers again. And then up at the very top, all those covers go full depth because um, it gives us some more storage now, it's the sort of stuff you'll store up there. It will not be things like scholastic sets and bicycles and old computers and radios and TVs. It should be put in the bin. It'll be for stuff like seasonal stuff if you don't wear, like winter clothes or summer clothes. And this is where this wee one comes in well here. My hair, I can't do a thing with my hair. Oh my God, it's really annoying me, you know. And I was out today and three men stopped and said, look at that, man, man. Well, you have to do something with your hair. You're a disgrace to Ireland. So I'll have to get something done today. So in here, right, this is the awkward corner space, right? So what we got here was we got a full length here so we can hang our long coats, you know, your funeral coat. You can hang those long coats and dresses in there. Well, Rosemary's dresses, I haven't started wearing them yet. Well, uh, maybe I'm a mate, you don't know, just not, just my secret. And then over here, that's where the, uh, we, is it England, Luke, you call it? The space beside the fireplace, so the wardrobe stops there. But then down below, look what they did here. They put this, like, a secret cupboard in the whole way down there, okay? So when you look into this wardrobe, you've got your wardrobe space for a double wardrobe, and then at the back of it, you've got this little hidey hole place, which would be ideal for things like winter blankets and sheets, and look, the cotton sheets can go in there in winter and the flannel sheets in summer. And it's not something you'll be all the time. But what they did here was they have a, they have a double, a double um, bottom on the, on the wardrobes here so you can stand on them um, to get in there. So it's not a case you'll walk in and your wardrobe will be no good. 
um, a wardrobe ward will start shaking. They've built the floor so it's like built like a floor that you can walk in and stand on it with no problem about the wardrobes getting buckled or anything. It's not a super job. This is where the expense comes in, getting these extras done. But I would never have been able to do that, you know. So I'm really pleased with that little feature there. And, uh, you know, if you had a gun or something, you could put a cabinet in there. It'd be ideal, you know. Um, I don't have a gun anymore because I just decided to get rid of it. But, uh, what do you call it? I wasn't using it, so. But, um, as I say, it would be ideal for hiding a gun, you know. In, in Ireland here, you have to have a gun in a cabinet. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get back out again. And uh, you have to have a gun in a cabinet and somewhere secure. And um, if, I'll just look at and talk to myself here. If you have a gun in a cabinet and a key in your pocket, you could go to jail. Okay, the key has to be somewhere inaccessible to the owner. And it also, my wife is not allowed to know where the key for the gun cabinet is. Okay, if I told her that, I'm breaking the law. And the reason the keys have to be kept separate from the cabinet is because you might get a few drinks in you and decide, oh, I'll just go down a bit of shooting here, you know. So I, oh, we all know that guns don't kill people. People kill people, but um, guns do kill people. You know, that's the bottom line. If you're sitting a few pints and you get it in their bad form and you've got the key of your gun cabinet in your pocket, well, we're all human, you know. But anyway, um, I was going to say, I don't want to start a whole debate on guns, guys, you know, okay. But it's very strict here, okay, very, very strict. And uh, I have a friend who is, he works in the police, and he said to me when I got the gun, he said to me, Brandon, will I tell you something? You make sure everything's in order, because if you're standing in your shorts at four o'clock in the morning, and there's two policemen standing going through your gun certificate and checking out your number of bullets you have, they count the bullets, you could be in big trouble. So you make sure everything's, you feel very, sorry, you feel very vulnerable if you're standing in your shorts at four in the morning and there's something not right with your gun. The police are entitled to call at any time and check the amount of ammunition you have and the number of guns and whether it's secure or anything else. If a policeman arrived here and said to me, I want to see your gun, okay, I can't tell him where the key for the gun cabinet is. I have to say to him, okay, let me go down here and I'll get the key. And he cannot see where I keep that key. It has to be completely secret. So, very strict. So that's one of the reasons I got rid of the gun. The back issues, I couldn't shoot it anyway, you know. But it's also the legal problems that it brought up were just immense. And a lot of people are handing their guns back in because they just can't be bothered, you know. Okay, that's enough on guns. So there we are, folks. That's us. That's the bedroom's finished. If we had known what we were going to do here, we would have got that light moved across into the centre just, just here, you know. But we can live with that, I think, you know. It's actually, it would be easy moves if we want to, because that's just, that's just set on there in the rows. If you just move that across, no problem. But it just means getting repainted and plastered. No, I couldn't be bothered with that. So there you are, folks. That's it. The wards are done. And we can start living like human beings again. We still have this space here to do. Um, we still have a space over here. So if we can put in dressers or something. Oh, the other thing about the wardrobes. I'll talk to you again while I'm talking to a wall. The guy, there's, there's, these come with a 10 year guarantee, okay? If anything goes wrong in the 10 years, it'll be replaced. But for as long as we own these wardrobes, if we decide we don't like these handles, or we decide that we want to have this section here, we want to put a couple more shelves in, that's done for nothing. That's free as part of the service. You can do any alterations you want inside the cabinets, inside the units or carcasses. And change any of the handles anytime you want for nothing. So I think that's a pretty good deal, you know. So there you go. That's where we are, folks. Um I'm pretty happy. Rosemary's delighted, which is the main the main part. I'm delighted too, just to get it done. So the next big thing is going to be the driveway. The stones are about to be ordered. I have to get on to the guy who's gonna do all the leveling out and grading and stuff. Well, there's no grading on the driveway, just to make it flat, you know. And then hopefully it'll be done in the next couple of weeks, maybe. Depends on when the guy can start doing it, you know. So, what am I pointing at? I'm pointing at the floor. Okay, so there you are, folks. All the best now. Bye-bye.